Hey everyone, this is Rod Buglion from Horizon, and I am here to explain why we've made a decision to increase the treasury pool from 10% to block reward to 20%. So there's no surprise that the market has come down significantly over the course of this year. So prices for Bitcoin are down almost 90%, and the same thing is true for Zen. So we've tracked the general market, uh, which in some cases is a good thing, and in these types of environments is not so good of a thing. So as a treasury community project where we have a pool of resources denominated in Zen, so every block that's mined, we get 1.25 Zen, currently goes into a treasury pool. Our ability to execute, our effective budget has, has uh, essentially collapsed with it. So throughout the course of the year, you know, this is no surprise to us. Maybe the, the uh, magnitude and persistence of the, the bear market is, I can say, probably a surprise to most people in the industry. Um, but the reality is we knew that there was high volatility in, in this environment and we had to plan as you know, you have to plan your budget, you have to plan your team composition, you have to plan your strategic priorities and what projects you're going to fund. So you typically don't plan your budgets to the tail end of a possible outcome distribution. So you probably don't want to tell necessarily to the mean of distribution, but you want to have some sort of slack in there. So at the beginning of the year, we staffed up to about a third of our budget. So times were good. Uh, we staffed up, we had a very optimistic market environment, and we had a lot of competition. So despite, you know, everyone can look back ex post and say, yes, sure, uh, very clear bubble. Uh, at the time, if you don't staff up and you don't try to compete, your the other projects in, in this market will be moving forward and you will be stagnant. So we staffed up what we thought at the time was extremely conservatively to about a third of our budget capacity. So we had sponsorships, we had events we were attending, we had different things that we were we were putting resources into, but our team composition was still fairly conservative of about a third of our budget. So the budget has collapsed throughout the year and we've had to do a lot of you know, scaling back. So we've scaled back on all of the low hanging fruit, all the discretionary expenditures, things from you know sponsorships, going to events, um, hosting radio shows, doing different types of outreach activities, evangelizing, getting the word out there about all the good stuff we're doing, we've had to scale back on significantly. We've had to cut contracts, we've had to cut partnerships. It's been pretty ugly, to be honest. But you have to do what you have to do, and you have to adjust to the market. You know, and then we had to get into the, the harder decisions. And this is on the team side. So the team that we built up, we're extremely proud of. And we've been cultivating them over the last two years to do excellent work. And these are all really motivated professionals who were happy to be here, excited, and their enthusiasm, you know, flowed through the work that they were doing. And to have to make cuts in this to this type of team is really difficult. But again, we had to, you know, you can't close your eyes to reality forever. So despite sucking up losses for, you know, a period of time that ex post, again, we could probably say was too long, we started getting into personnel cuts. We're on our fourth round right now, guys. So We've taken some very deep cuts, and now we're at the stage where we, we're coming up to the you know the point where we said, okay, if we cut deeper, we're going to have to shut down projects. We're going to have to shut down and or put on ice and lay off teams for new products and infrastructure, things like side chains, things like treasury, things like bringing our secure and super node uh, tracking and payment system to an automated side chain. Uh, different things that we consider, you know, unique value propositions for why we even exist. So we're at the point now, if we cut deeper into the team, we're cutting these projects and having to say, well, these reasons for why we think, you know, we have unique value in this sea of thousands of competitors, we're going to have to stop. So at this point, I consider that unacceptable. We've already had management and many team members take voluntary pay cuts and in many circumstances actually continue working for free. So unfortunately, this doesn't translate to everyone, right? As much as we want to say that we're all here because we love the project, yes, that's true, but we have bills to pay and people have families to support. So we can't ask everyone on the team to work for free. So the reality is now we're at the point where we need to go to the revenue side of the equation. So we've done what we think is, you know, we've made four consecutive rounds of cuts and most of these cuts were done actually in the last month as the market really started to collapse. We were holding steady when Bitcoin was about $6,500. And when it broke below that, we, we knew that we had to take some drastic actions and we've been doing that. We've improved our cost controls, our contract management, project management, everything internally to make us more efficient, we've done. And we continue to do that and continue to get more efficient. But now 
What I'm proposing here is we double the treasury pool from 10% of block reward to 20%. And what this does is, you know, let's be clear, this doesn't even put us in a comfortable position where we can say we can start building reserves because the reality is doubling the treasury pool now gives us the effective resources of where we were about a month ago. And I can, I can tell you, you know, as an inside, inside scoop here, guys, where we were a month ago was not a comfortable budget. But combine that with our deep cuts and we can survive and maintain the project at these levels. So the good news here is that by taking these actions on the cost cutting side, the efficiency side, and then on the revenue side, the project is able to sustain itself and keep moving forward on our significant accomplishments on the product side and the technical side and the new, new user acquisition side for the BD and marketing teams. So what we have here at 20% is a sustainable project. And I think this is the critical point to realize. So especially as you know, the other stakeholder groups here that, that get parts of block rewards. So you've got the secure node operators, the super node operators and miners. You know, the, these are all extremely valuable parts of maintaining our infrastructure, but without a team that's actually delivering new technologies and delivering products and getting people there to use the infrastructure, the project just doesn't have value. So we're at the point where you know, we, it, it doesn't make sense to cut deeper before we first go to the revenue side and, and you know, shore up our finances to the point where at 20% of block reward, we can be sustainable and still a healthy project. So as I know, it looks like the sky is falling. Every day we wake up and the markets are red, right? So what I can say from experience here, and, and this just isn't me, but just look at market data is, you know, markets go in cycles. When they go down, they eventually go up. When they go up, they eventually go down. This is just the reality that we live in. Now in the crypto environment, the, the amplitudes are extreme on both sides, right? So um, th this is something that I can say, we will survive this, right? It is the bear market's lasting longer. It's more persistent than we, we thought it would be. But now the project is much healthier. We're a much leaner, meaner organization that you know is is running at what we consider, you know, uh, stable and sustainable levels now, you know, given this 20% treasury increase. So guys, I hope you support this, this decision as much as, you know, the entire team does. We've discussed this internally and, you know, it seems like, um, you know, everyone has, you know, broad consensus here. It was actually unilateral within the team, clearly, because the, the incentive is we want to keep working. We want to keep delivering on a roadmap. We want to keep achieving what we think uh, you know, will be a game changer for, you know, this industry and what we think will be a game changer for society. We're very idealistic people here, guys. Um, so what, what we need here is to keep being able to function, keep being able to pay our team and keep delivering on our promises. So the sky is not falling, despite what the market may say, right? And we will get through this. We're, we'll get through this together. Our team is extremely competent. We have amazing partners on the marketplace, in the marketplace. So, uh, we're we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to we're going to survive, and not just survive, but we're going to thrive, and we're going to keep delivering all the promises that we made. So, guys, thanks for taking the time for listening to me here. I hope you understand that this was an absolutely critical decision. And then the the counter to this is, you know, what we're doing here with the resources are to deliver one of our key value propositions, which is a treasury voting system. This would be the ideal thing to bring to vote if we had a voting mechanism in place that was actually you know, game theoretic and not provably gameable in the sense that people could exploit it uh, in a negative way. So if, you know, in the future, this type of decision uh, should be made through community vote, uh, and we want to keep rushing on delivering the capability to make that happen. So guys, thank you for taking the time, and we'll keep moving forward as a project, and we'll get through this together. Thank you.